focus. Focus. And I like you know to define it this way. Focus is F O C U S. Acronym. Acronym. F O C U S. And it means following one course until successful. Following one course until what? Successful. successful. That means you are doing one thing until you become what? Successful. The truth is, when you locate what God has finished, when you locate what God has finished in heaven, for which he has sent you on earth to what? To start. There's always something God has finished. When God speaks to you today, he will not do what he's telling you today, tomorrow. Anything God says to somebody is what he has already finished. <laughs> Anything God says what? To you today. He has already done it yesterday. God doesn't do what? God doesn't tell you what he's about to do. He tells you what he has already done. So if you are sure that God has already done it and is now telling you all you need to do is what? Focus on it. You do what? You focus. He's been able to pay attention to the things that God is revealing to you and me. Being able to what? Pay attention. Pay attention to it. So focus is staying spirit. What do I call it? Staying spirit. The staying spirit. Being able to do one thing until you become successful. Being able to do one thing. When they mention the name Bill Gates, what do you think about? Have you ever been Gates before? So why, what do you think? What comes to your mind? Computer. Computers. Why? Because he has stayed on computers all his life. <laughs> so when you mention computer, the next name that comes to you is Bill Gates. When you mention Bishop Oedipo, the next thing that comes to your mind, plenty, prosperity, <laughs> breakthrough, faith, comes into your mind. Why? Because that is what he has stayed on for many years. When they call Pastor Kumui, <laughs> the only thing that comes to your mind is what? Holiness. Why? Because he has stayed on that teaching all his life. When you mention Billy Graham, what comes to your mind? The salvation. Why? Because all his life he stayed on what? Salvation. So, when people call your name, what picture comes into their mind? Whatever picture comes into their mind is what you are focused on. It's what you are focused on. But there are some people, when they mention their name, they don't even know what to mention. Because today they are selling paper. Next tomorrow they are selling cement. Next tomorrow they are going to Germany to go and, <laughs> to go and jam some things. <laughs> so what am I trying to say? Your focus is what? Is key. Is that staying power. So focus is working consistently on the path of vision. Focus is working what? Consistently on the path of what? Vision. And what is vision? Something that you can see. Something that is unfolded to you. Your ability to see ahead. That is vision. Focus is embracing patience in your quest for what? Breakthrough. You want to break through in life. And then you are embracing what? Patience. You are working with patience. Because it takes patience to be focused. <laughs> it takes what? Patience. patience to be focused. If you are no patient, you can't be focused. And if you must be focused, you need to be patient. Focus is forgetting those things that pull you back to yesterday. Focus is what? Forgetting those things that pull you back to yesterday while maintaining your drive for success tomorrow. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. Say, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching out toward those things which are before. He said, I want, I press. That means I forget yesterday. I'm reaching out for the things that are ahead. So focus is a booster of faith. Focus is a what? A booster of your faith. 
You don't have faith if you don't have focus. You don't have what? Faith if you don't have focus. I pray that God will give you faith. And it will empower your focus. In the name of Jesus Christ. So to focus is to maintain your lane on the path to greatness. To focus is to maintain your own lane on your path to, to greatness. So many people want to be great, but they don't want to be focused. <laughs> the truth is that you only be known for the things you are focused on. You only be known for the things you are what? focused on. People only call you when they know you are focused on one thing. It's better to be good, very good. It's better to be 100 times better at one thing than to just be 1% good at 100 things. Yeah? They say motu, you are 1% good. They say screwdriver, you are 1% good. They say marketing, you are 1% good. They say selling pepper, you are 1% good. They say uh, mechanic, you are 1% good. That means you are good in everything 1%. And now I want to now repair my car. Your 1% is not enough to repair the car. <laughs> so I won't remember you. <laughs> I won't remember. But you see some, I, I, I do printing. I go to some places where they do the printing. This day. And most, I discovered that most of the people that do most of my job, they are either allergies or alpha. Why? They have, they have known that job too well because that's the only thing they do. But when you see Christian, he does it for two weeks. He's selling rubber. <laughs> so you can't even tell what he knows. <laughs> so you have to be able to what? Settle with what? One thing. Joel chapter 2, verse 8. He said, Joel chapter 2, verse 8. He said, Neither shall one trust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon his word, it shall not hurt them. You become unwounded when you are focused. Nobody can hurt you when you are focused. Because your smartness will be to another level. Your smartness will just get to another level when you are focused. I'm telling you, you will be too smart. Don't you notice that? Anything you are doing every day, you will be, you'll be developing ideas on how to be better every day. The way you did it last week won't be the way you do it this week. But when you do it today and you don't do it again until maybe next year, you, it, the next year it will be as though it will look as though you just started. <laughs> eh? It will just look as though you just started. So you need, you know, to keep at it. So as a youth, what must I focus on? <clears throat> now that we know that focus is what is key. So as a youth, what must I focus on? Number one, focus on reading books that inspire you on the path of greatness. One thing that has happened to the youth nowadays because of internet and all these things, very few people read. Very few youths read. People hardly read books nowadays. And the truth is that your understanding is not sure if you are not a reader. I don't care how many years you have been going to church. If you go to church every day, every night, and you don't read the Bible, you can't understand scriptures. It's not possible. It's not possible. You can't understand scriptures. You just be saying, Papa say, Pastor say, Uncle say, Baba say. That's all. And there will be no understanding. You will just have mere information. So you need books. So when you see people that have understood certain things very well, check them out. They are readers. Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. He said, and Daniel said, I understood by what? By books. By books. So show me a man of books, and I will show you a man that has strong understanding. Strong understanding. That's why some people, they will come to me and say, they want to get married. And I'll ask them, okay, what can I say have you? How many books on marriage have you read? Say books on marriage. Ah, I have not seen that one before. Uh, I want to marry. 
You will get into marriage and be confused. Because there is, there is a wisdom for relationship. There's another wisdom for marriage. <laughs> and since you have never been married before, you need to understand what goes on in marriage. By what? Reading. You read books. You read books. You want to gain finance. I, all you know is what people say. No. You need to understand. By what? By reading. My good dog said, if I get into your house and I check your library, if I can't see any book on finance, you don't have a financial future. <laughs> you don't have a financial future. You need to start reading as young people from now. Because the truth is, as you are getting older, by the time you finish your university education, you will not have the pleasure to read. Why? Because there will be no time. And because it is not a habit in you, it will be difficult to cultivate it there. It will be difficult. That's why I see so many elders today. All they are just doing, they are just buying books and using it to as decoration. They don't read one, they don't read it. Why? Because what they have not done from young, from their youth, they can't grow up and start doing it. Easily. Because when they just look at the book, get away, can you? It's dollars inside this book. If money is not coming out of the book. <laughs> That's not interesting. But when you grow up with reading, you become you know, that's why there's hardly anything I want to do in life today. I must read something about it. I must read something. I must read something. Because if you don't understand it, he said, any man that lacks understanding is like someone that's what? Abiding among the dead. <laughs> Your congregation is dead people. <laughs> when you don't read. <laughs> when you don't read. When there's no understanding. So what you read always provides what you need. What you read will provide what you want, you need. So whatever you need is inside the book. All you need to do is read it. But the problem is that many of us won't read. Won't read. What you read will always shape how you look. Because books shape your looks. Books. The quality of books you are reading will show in your face. He said wisdom makes the face of the man to what? To shine. So your shining face is a function of books. So buy quality books. Some people say, God spoke to me. Let me tell you the truth. That God speaks to you most times is because you are a reader. There are many times that the Holy Spirit will just, I can sense that the Holy Spirit, God wants to say something to me. And he's just moving me. I, I, can, I can sense that he wants to say something. The next thing, that's why in my room, my, my bedroom, my wife, me and my wife's bedroom, the way the wardrobe is done, there's a middle partition there. So I turn that middle partition to my library. Why? So that when I'm sleeping, I can be looking at those books. And most times, when the Holy Spirit just whisper, whisper something to my spirit, and I look at those, those things, I will just see one book that will just stand out. And then I'll just go and pick it. I can do everything to just read it and pick it. And by the time I start reading, it's just the answer to my questions. <laughs> just the, what I'm looking for. So I can say that point that God spoke to me through the pages of those books. But some people are looking for one, one spooky event where they're just hearing. <laughs> My son. <laughs> yes, it, it talks that way. But until he talks to you that way, get his voice from what? From books. From books. Get his voice from books. Get his voice from books. He speaks from the pages of scriptures. He speaks from the pages of scriptures. He said, The voice of God thunders upon the waters. Psalm chapter 29. He said, The voice of God thunders. Upon what? Upon the waters. So God's voice is upon books. So when you are a reader, you have access to the voice of God. That is one way to have, and it comes through focus. When you are focusing on what? On God's word. When you are focusing on God's word. So what you read determines your leadership. What you read determines your what? Your leadership. You can't lead people if you are not a reader. 
If you are not focused on something written in a book, you, are, you can't lead anybody. What you read determines your leadership. The truth is that you better understand what you read. When you read, understanding comes alive. Understanding comes alive. Understanding comes alive. Like for those of you, that, some of us that uh, you, you are in a particular church and you are not reading the words of your pastor, you can't understand what he's saying. You can't understand what he's saying. Because faith comes by what? Yeah. By hearing. Yeah. But reading brings what? Understanding. I want to, so the, the faith is instructions that you must follow. But the reading will empower your words. Your understanding of the instruction. Your understanding of the instruction. So you need a better understanding of the instruction through reading. Number two, what do you need to focus on? This one is very crucial. Focus on keeping the right company. Focus on what? Keeping the right company. And you can't you can say this enough. The congregation of fools always get destroyed. Show me your friend, and I'll tell you who you are. Show me the kind of people you are mingling with. <laughs> Show me the kind of people that you are moving with. I can tell you the kind of wisdom that is working in you. You can't walk with fools and act like a wise man. It's not possible. And you can't walk with the wise and now pretend that you are a fool. <laughs> it's not possible. It's not possible. So focus on what? Keeping the right company. Move with the wise people. Move with wise people. I like what one person said. He said, uh, 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 Pastor Funke He said, I don't work with my mates. He said, I don't flock with my mates. I flock with people that are wiser, better than myself. That is the best way to become great. When you are working with people that are better than you, people that make you feel as though you are you don't exist. By the time you know you exist, you are in the midst of some giants. I'll tell you. Just imagine now that you are you are always relating with people like Pastor Sam and you are relating with people like Pastor Okonyo Imadi. You are both, that is you are always going to see them and you are always relating with them. One day, one day, they will carry your hand like this and you will be standing one on one in front of Bishop Ridley. And Bishop will say, Who is this small boy? So, ah, this is our friend, our friend. That's personal. That's personal. How, how are you personal? Who would that for you to be for you to be that kind of company, if not for the kind of people that you're working with? My Bulldog said, you are only four people away from the president. Somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows the president. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. So, if I know you and you know him, and he knows him, and he knows the president. <laughs> that means my knowing you, it's just a matter of knowing him later, through you. And knowing him, later, through you. And I find what's happening, I'm in front of the president. <laughs> so you must check, you must watch your company. company. So when you are working with any help, you, know, you will get to any other places. <laughs> and somebody said, he said, a thousand good friends will never be enough. If you have one thousand good people, you will, it will be enough. You will still need more. But one bad friend, one bad friend is more than enough. <laughs> Just one bad friend is enough to wreck your destiny. <laughs> but if you have a thousand friends, things will be going better. You'll be moving. Well, and you'll be needing more. But the day one bad person enter your life, and you allow the person, you are finished. <laughs> I want to see marriages, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years marriage, and they are just going like a roller coaster. They want stupid idiot just showed up, and they allow the person. And the person just wrecks the marriage. So you have to be very careful how you give people access yeah. into your life. Not everybody is qualified for access. <laughs> There are some people, when they enter your life, they will ruin it. <laughs> they will ruin it. So you have to be very careful how to guard yourself from certain people. 
Not everybody is qualified for access. So those you company with will determine what comes around you. The people you are accompanying with, it will determine what is camping around you. <laughs> there are some people you they, you camp around them, favor start camping around you. There are some people you camp around them, blessings, breakthroughs start camping around you. But there are some people when you camp around them, the opposite. So you have to be very careful. So you have to choose your friends wisely. Right. Choose your friends wisely. It will help you for focus. That's what I mean. I choose friends based on my focus. I don't just choose people in here. My wife was asking me one day, she said, is it that you don't have friends? <laughs> I said, why do you say that? She said, because I don't see anybody. Most people really come in to see you. He said, I said, I'm not, I can count my friends. I'm not sure they, I'm not sure they have to stay. I'm not sure they have to find. I know to find. And who are your friends? People that when you are challenged, you can call them. When things are happening around you that you don't understand, you can call them. And when things happen for you, maybe you get one solid breakthrough, you can also call them to come and celebrate with you. So those kind of people are not always many. <laughs> they are not those words. They are not always many. So when good people enter your life, good things start happening. When good people enter your life, good things will start happening. And when the opposite will happen, enter your life, what happens? The opposite what? Start happening. So you have to be very careful. You have to choose your friends wisely. It will help your focus. So if you want to be great, what do you do? Focus on locating great people. Focus. You want to pass jam, and you are working with friends that have written jam there four times. They don't even know their direction. <laughs> Locate people that you know that these guys are bookworms, so that you can learn their secrets, and then you move forward. I have, I have friends, I have one or two or three of them, and almost all my friends that I can mention their names, they are far better than myself, far, I mean, far, 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 that is, they are, they are up here, they are far better than myself, all of them, they are like five or six of them, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are up there, and every time I'm around them, I feel in quotes, inferior, why, because of body, because I'm their friend. Something in me is telling me if God can do for this one. Since we are together, it will not me. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. Why do you think some of us, some people are living inside Kinala? Like, it's because you see the excellence, you see the uh, whatever. You know that one day, one day, the God that can put you inside this kind of congregation can reproduce the same. Bishop, when you go to Aralobot and he looked at the place and he said, this thing can happen anywhere. <laughs> Say this thing can happen anywhere. And today we are coming as university. It has happened. <laughs> so have that consciousness of moving what with the right company. Number three, what do I focus on? Focus on sowing seeds of faith. Focus on what? Sowing seeds of faith. One of the most powerful things that can happen to any man in the body of Christ is understanding what it means to sow seeds of faith. Sowing seeds of faith demands focus when you are giving. When you are giving, give with what? With focus. What are you focusing on? On the results you are expecting. For instance, check pastors. A pastor that is in court, feeling sick, in his body, he doesn't understand what is happening. When he gets to service, 75 or 90 percent of the prayers he's going to be praying for you or the congregation will be boiling down towards sickness. He will be rebuking sickness like anything. I cause sickness in your life, I destroy sickness in your life, I destroy disease. I as he's destroying diseases in your life. God is designed this is in his life. Because whatever you make happen for others, God makes it happen for you. And because I want God to be the one doing my own, I make it happen for you. <laughs> I don't want God to be the one doing it for you. So I want him to be my own. So I stand as God, releasing grace upon your life against every form of sickness and disease. And he will be removing those things. Let me 
Let me give you more fire. Give you more health. Give you more prosperity. Give you more grace. <laughs> and I want. So that is called seed of faith. Seed of faith means anything. There was a time that my wife, when we were, we were waiting, we were waiting for a baby for more than six years. Almost six years. And then there was one day she called me and said she has one um, person that she wanted to they wanted to be doing prayer prayer uh, work together in the night to be praying. I said, what are you praying for? She said they want to be praying for the fruit of the womb. I said, eh. I said, when you get there every night, don't pray for yourself. Tell her that we want to pray for you. That I want to pray for you so that you will carry the fruit of the womb. I'm sure she was like, what kind of uh, you're like today? I'm looking for baby and you're saying that you're praying for somebody else. I see that's what you do. And that is what we must do. She so reluctantly agreed and they went and she kept doing that. He was praying for the woman. The following year, she got pregnant. That's my wife. Now I got pregnant for the first time. Why? Because she made it a seed of faith. <laughs> so what is the seed of faith? You pray for others what you want God to do for you. You give it to others what you want God to give to you. Give it to others because you want, you don't want to do that anyway. Keep your questions in other <laughs> so, so what you want God to do for you, what do you do? You sow it as a seed. Somebody was sharing with me on Facebook. I was reading it on Facebook. One pastor. He said he, he did everything he knows to do to grow their church. But the church didn't grow. The church was just going down and down and down. And then one day, he was already dying. He was he almost giving up. He was like, but the thing just came to him as light. He said, I think he read in the book or something. And that light came so strong. And then he went to Pastor Paul and Angel's church. That they were building when they were building the 100. Is there any problem there? Huh? Just off. Don't worry, don't worry. This one, the. So. So he went to Paul in the church. They were building the 100 seater tabernacle. No worry, just leave, just leave. So he was uh, building the 100 seater tabernacle. You that your church is one small thing that you're just in this room, green and true. He said he packed all the money he had. All the money that some people sold towards the building of their own small. Just, he packed everything. I went to Paul the United States Church and dropped it for the yeah. building of the district. Yeah. The other staff and left. So mysteriously, mysterious. Certain people started seeing the project he was working on. And mysteriously, money started flowing. In. That today, you know, they don't only have a tabernacle, they have an estate. Wow. He said it happened within a very short time. Why? Seed faith. Anything that does not qualify to be a harvest. The Bible says that because that wisdom is saying sow it as a word, as a seed. Into this, into the soil of what you are what focused on. Because he could have sold it anywhere. But he wanted to duplicate what is happening in the nature's life. So he did what? He sowed it. So did them. So that's a seed faith. So your seeds would always bring returns in the direction you sow it. So are you looking for children? Be a blessing to somebody that's looking for one. That's why you see us pray. The kind of prayer I pray now is is the prayer of the kind of challenges I see around me. So I'm looking for. Uh, so when I see somebody having a particular challenge, that is the kind of prayer I will pray. If it is related to the kind of challenge I'm, I pray for the person. Straight. I want God to always do it. The husbandman will be the one, the first particular. So make yourself a husbandman. 
by doing what? By praying for people the things that you, you are planning it. That is what some call kingdom advancement prayer. <laughs> because what you want God to do in your life, pray for